What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Now, today we're doing Andre's top four regionals question and answer video from Ontario. And as you see, it is my one of my favorite decks ever, Verizian Genesect. Now, Verizian has you know Verdant Wind, can't be affected by special conditions. Conditions if there's Grass Energy attached to your Pokemon, Emerald Slash 50 attached to Grass Energy, sweaty your Pokemon. Most of the time you put it to Genesect because you have G-Booster, which does 200 damage, but you have to discard two energies. It's a really solid deck, and it's the reason why it won Worlds. But overall, it's a very, like I said, it's a solid list. Very, It's very well made. There's a reason why he did make top eights, and as you see, he did play the one Coles Machine. We talked about this some, and he actually talks about really cool tricks with the Coles Machine, and I really like it a lot, so look out for that in the interview. But hopefully you enjoy the interview, and uh, just give me a second, and we'll see his day two list. All right, so for day two, Andre kind of stuck with the same deck, but he switched some cards around. As you see, now he has a town map. He has tool scrapper since it is expanded. You choose up the two Pokemon tools or attached to your Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponents, and discard them. You can have some pretty cool tricks with that, like get off muscle bands off Genesex and attach to G Boost or something cool like that. You have Super Rod now. You shuffle the three in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy cards. From your discard pile back into your deck. Uh, he did include a Drift Plume now instead, and he gives the reason why he played that. And the biggest card of Rizian Genesec that gains from Expanded is Sky Arrow Bridge. The retreat cost of each basic Pokemon to play is one less. So with Rizian, he has a one retreat cost. Genesect, he has a one retreat cost. I'm trying to pull it up. There we go. Drachi, one retreat cost. Now Drift Plume does have two, so it kind of stinks. And uh, Drift Plume has one, so it's all right. I mean, uh, besides these two. <laughs> I mean, it's really good. I was going to say it's alright, but it's, it's amazing because, you know, you have free retreat. Now you have a counter stadium, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoy the interview and thanks for watching. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Team Fish Nichols YouTube channel. Today we're doing a regionalist question and answer video. And uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Andre Chason. Um, I'm from Toronto ish area, Ontario, Canada about three hours away from there. I don't have a league from where I'm from, so if you're American, I'll just say I'm from Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, which regionals are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about Ontario regionals, which took place in Kitchener, Ontario this past weekend. Okay, so we know that you played the Verizian Genesec deck, but uh, what were the decks that you played against, and did you win or lose against them? Um, so yeah, I played Verizian Genesect. I'm sure a bunch of you guys will laugh at the list and be like, oh, it's another one of those copy and paste lists. It is card for card with one exception, the same list as Andrew's that he played in Indiana, I think it was, for States. Mm -hmm. um, except I dropped the tool retrieval for the enhanced hammer. Um, I didn't think Headringer would be very big at all in this tournament, um, and the Enhanced Hammer was to help a little bit against Evil Tall as well as the Raichu. Um, so, again, going with Frizzy and Genesec, round one, I hit Executor. I believe it was Christopher Shemansky playing it. Um, I played another reason for playing Verizian was I thought it had a decent um, Executor matchup, which I never tested at all. I kind of went in with the strategy, like, Attach as many grass to the Verizian once I get an Emerald Slash off, maybe twice onto the same Genesect, and then pushed up, I'd be good. Mm -hmm. um, against that match, I ended up 2-0-ing him. It wasn't that close at all. He did absolutely everything he can, but I think he hit one out of probably like 12 uh, Crushing Hammers. Okay. So <laughs> it, it was pretty... I was getting really lucky, and he really wasn't, which without having lasers in that matchup, you really revolve on... Um, hitting the crushing hammer heads. He did play Headringer, which he got down uh, turn one all the time on me, um, which was a little surprising at first. Not a lot of the Canadian players will play Headringer in that deck. Um, so that was round one. Um, round two, another Michigan player. I can't remember what his name was. Probably playing a very, very similar executor list as well. So I was feeling pretty good hitting a matchup that at that point I was a little more comfortable with in round two. Um, winning the first game and I guess a commanding lead, I guess. It was a good match. Round two, like, I got absolutely destroyed. Um, he hit, like, every crushing hammer heads after hitting none of them. I couldn't emerald slash the entire game. Um, so the laser damage added up. He had the muscle bands down. I couldn't discard those. Um, I ended up scooping after he took, like, two knockouts because I just wasn't going to keep the energy in play. I don't play a trump card or anything like that. Okay. So once you get six energy in the discard pile, something like that, they're not coming back. Um, and then round, or game three, rather, um, it was relatively quick. 
I had everything I needed. He missed crushing hammers, and that's all there really is to the matchup. I um, feel like I'm talking too much. No, uh, you're good. You're good. You're fine. <laughs> um, round three. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm surprised I'm 2-0. I'm like, oh, when am I going to hit the, the Dawn fan? Because I'm not really comfortable with that matchup. When am I going to hit the Flareon? When, I'm, when am I going to hit the Night March? So mm. I play against, I, I can't remember his name either. He opens Toad and plays a Battle Compressor. And I'm like, okay, what is this? It could be a weird Flareon list, potentially, because he discarded an Execute, um, an Archie's Ace in the Hole, and... Another card, I can't remember how relevant it was, but I'm like, I don't, it wasn't an Empoleon, it wasn't another stage two Pokemon, he didn't discard anything else, so I was very confused. I thought it was a Flareon deck that may have played an extra Toad, but it ended up being Blastoise. Okay. <laughs> it, it ended up starting 2-0. Oh. Um, that game, he prized both his Blastoise, needless <laughs> to say, after his, his Battle Compressor, so... He ended up like, he got a black hero out, attached lightning, attached water, attached water, so I just red signaled it up in G Booster, and at that point, I think he scooped. I think he played the whole game out, actually, but it's just, he didn't do anything. He's got Keldeos and Toads all over the place, all weak to grass, so. Mm -hmm. Round, or game two in that match, um, he gets a turn one Archie's Ace in the hole, going first. Um, I end up getting two Verizians down, and I'm contemplating back and forth with myself. Like, do I attach to the active? What are the odds of him hitting a Black Ballista turn two? Um, and I decide to attack um, the Grass of the Active Verizian, and he ends up playing, like, some, like, 20 cards on his next turn and does end up hitting the turn two Black Ballista. Um, playing his hand down to zero to do it, like, he played, like, Computer Surge and Superior Energy Retrieval, um, with the three cards in hand because he had the two eggs in discard pile. Mm -hmm. So he pulled it off, um, but then I was able to um, get an energy onto a Vrizzian on the bench, and he wasn't able to Black Ballista again. So I Emerald Slash for 70, um, and then followed up with a Megalo Cannon with Deoxys for 110, um, end him down to two, and he couldn't draw it a bit. So as much as that probably should be a really, really good matchup for me, if you get the turn one Blastoise, the turn one, two... Uh, Black Ballista, it, it's hard to keep up with True. as a team player. Um, round four, I guess the most controversial round for a lot of the people watching me play that day um, was against Calvin, who ended up placing second in the entire tournament. Day one, I don't want to spoil too much of his deck if you're watching my video before his, because I believe he's going to have an interview soon. He was playing a... Oh, I guess it got posted on Burbank, so it's, it's already old news. Um, <laughs> he was playing a Seismitoad... Keldeo, um, Jinx, Muna with a Macargo line, which was an unknown card until that day. Um, <laughs> both of us were really unsure exactly how the matchup would play out exactly. Like, if he doesn't get the Macargos down or prizes one of them, I can probably deal with one of them, and then I'm just going to steamroll the rest of the matchup. Rob Davies will probably argue with me over that one because he is very content. Calvin was going to smack me up in that game. So half of the people after said... Because we ended up IDing. We ID'd that round, which is early in the tournament to take an ID. Um, but I'm friends with Calvin, and we wanted to give each other, since we're in a relatively similar position for points, um, to give each other an equal opportunity to do well in the tournament, which I guess you'll find out ended up pretty well for both of us. Yeah. Um, which was nice, because I had a break as well to go eat. Um, <laughs> round five, um, I was playing against Kevin Baxter, which I knew what he played. Uh, my friend Mark, playing a similar list to me, um, played him round one and got smacked up, um, playing Rizzi and Genesect as well. Um, he had a 2-2 Primal Grout online, which he always discarded turn one, but he had a heavy um, Halucha, Baby Landorus, and Landorus EX counts, um, which Landorus EX is hard for Rizzi to deal with. Being hit 90, 110, turn one, um, depending on if he's going first or second, is really hard for the deck. Um, I believe on turn three, he ended up knocking out a Genesect for, to take his third and fourth prize with a no discard um, lands judgment with three strong energies on the Landorus. Um, I got 2 0 that uh, series. I ended up keeping it relatively close, um, but I don't think that was a matchup that if I played it any differently, I was going to win. 
but it was nice to get at least close in both the games. I wasn't getting absolutely steamrolled mm -hmm. because I got to play on stream that game and I they came yeah. up to me like, oh, are you comfortable playing on stream? And Kevin's like, oh yeah, no problem. Like, no, I'm not getting absolutely bodied on stream because I, <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be good. Um, so yeah, at that point, um, I'm 3-1-1. I'm getting a little bit nervous. Um, I've never done this well in a regional states event before. Um, two rounds left, and round six, I play against Seismitoad Slurpuff with a Mewtwo and two Silent Lab and two Charizard. Okay. Um, <laughs> which, he didn't even get the Charizard of the Lab out game one, so it was a really, like, it wasn't a 6-0. I think he ended up taking a knockout, but... You just Emerald Slash onto Verizians over and over again, and you pretty much... I lost against that deck so much through Cities, because that was the only deck in Canada that did well uh, throughout Cities that I was very comfortable with the matchup. But then when the, the Silent Lab comes down and he starts wing attacking and he can actually laser you, um, it's hard to keep up with that. But I ended up 2-0-ing that game as well. So 4-1-1, um, last round. There are a bunch of matchups that I didn't want to play. Um, out of all the people who were 4 one one I ended up hitting one that was not favorable, a little more favorable than some of the other um, 4 one players. And I was playing against uh, Edward Quang, or Quang Bang, as a lot of the Canadians call him. <laughs> um, playing Evil Tall, like straight Evil Tall, basically. Um, he's known to have very like strange and unique lists. That play he was playing like Acrobikes, Bikes, random receivers into Zerosic and trump card every turn. And apparently he played a Malamar EX as well, okay. um, which I never saw because there would be no point of him benching it unless like he was going for a big attack at the end, which is unlikely. Um, and only two yeah. evil tall EX. So, and crushing hammers and head ringer, which was key as well. Um, game one. Um, I was able to set up the Raichu, which the first time I ever evolved into Raichu all day <laughs> did not match up. I literally, every single time um, I play with the deck with the 1-1 Raichu, I always open with a Juniper as my starting supporter, and it's just the Raichu in my hand that I discard at turn one every time. But that game, I got it set up. Um, and it definitely, um, although the matchup should have been a little more in my favor, the Raichu is definitely what won me game one. Um, game two, um, I believe I started Deoxys for the first time the entire tournament, which is, which is honestly, I would rather start, um, Jirachi in a lot of circumstances than Deoxys. <laughs> I hate, I almost dropped it just because I hate starting Deoxys, it's the worst. Um, I had Deoxys start, and his deck did what it's known to do. He was hitting Crushing Hammer heads, I was like, turn five Emerald Slash. It wasn't, it wasn't happening for me, um, I ended up scooping. Um, within maybe 10, 15 minutes at the absolute most because um, I was aware of how much time I had left. Mm -hmm. uh, so it came down to one game, game three. Um, I start Genesect to his Seismitoad, and I'm going first. So my big thing is I got to make sure I retreat. Otherwise, I'm not getting a turn to Emerald Slash. It's not happening. Um, I played it a lot of cards in my hand, Junipered, um, whiffed the switch, escape rope, whatever I needed. So... I, I thought that would be really crucial to get the Vrizzian active turn one. And again, in game three, when I needed it the most, I discarded the Raichu on turn one. Because <laughs> I needed to go for the switch. I couldn't um, have myself stuck active and be a turn behind. Yeah. Um, so I played the Juniper and ended up missing it, which was disappointing. Um, and the game was very back and forth throughout the entire game. Um, it came down to the point where um, I believe I was... It had been zero, one, two. Yeah, I was turn zero, um, and I needed to take two prizes, and he needed to take three, I believe. Okay. Um, and his deck was almost down to nothing. I ended up, like, emerald slashing, um, and I have, like, no energy left in deck. Like, I ended up only getting one into play or something like that. It's very, like, it's a blur to me right now, <laughs> that, I, that entire match. Um, but... He ends up, because I only needed one prize left, he needed to retreat his baby evil tall because I would have just knocked it out the next turn. So he ends up retreating to a dark rye and playing trump card. And I have an energy switch in my hand and an active Genesect with one energy and a G booster and a Verizian on the bench. So I ended up, since he trump carded, he put the professor's letter back into my deck. 
So I just skylight for Professor's Letter, Energy Switched, and G Booster the Dark Cry um, for the game. So <laughs> that was pretty big. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those were my Swiss rounds. Day one, I ended up in seventh seed. Going into day two, um, there were a bunch of 5 one ones, so that's my day one. Okay. So I'll talk about the deck just a little bit. Now, sure. With the idea behind Raichu, was that just for Evil's Hall, or was another reason to play it? Um, it's a deck that probably needs to have the seventh prize attacker. Um, it's a free retreater and a deck that really, really relies on getting turn two Emerald Slash without Sky or Bridge. It's nice to maybe open Pikachu, evolve into Raichu, retreat. If there's a knockout, you can go into it. Um, again, having a one prize attacker that can swing sometimes for 100, 120, um, can be helpful. But I thought Evil Tall Garbodor, as always, could be a popular play. Um, which I never ran into it the entire day. Um, but overall, it's usually like a 50-50 matchup for the most part, but still a difficult one. Um, so just having that to swing the matchup, as well as the one enhanced hammer, I felt comfortable with the match. The biggest thing was Evil Tall. There wasn't really any other reason outside of having a one prize attacker. Dedenne didn't seem like a great idea. It's not a really good start. Um, it's situational. Um, what was the other reason for it? Oh, and there's, there wasn't going to be like a Drift Bloom or anything. I didn't think um, that would be too helpful. And I only had room for the one Enhanced Hammer. There wasn't anything else I was going to cut at all for it. So. Okay. Now, what was the idea behind the one Plasma Frigate? Um, literally just for Silent Lab. That's the only reason. Um, I considered and had some people trying to convince me the night before to put in Frozen City instead. Um, there may be some circumstances where that would be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I just chose to stick with that. It's a list that obviously um, Andrew Estrada did well with in Indiana. Um, I, I don't think that there's going to be many other Verizian Genesec players out there who will know more about the deck than he does. Um, so I trusted his judgment and just kind of kept it like that. Okay. And with the one Coalish Machine, did you ever have a, a crazy back-to-back G-Booster turn because of it? Oh, yeah, it is. I would never... In Virginia Regionals, I played Verizian Genesect uh, with no Enhanced Hammer. I ended up playing a Mime in three potions um, because I thought Landy Bats would be big in that tournament. I ended up hitting, like, all bad matchups in that tournament. But I cut um, a Chorus Machine for the third potion. And after that day, losing... I think I lost a Dawn fan having the potion in the hand thing. Like, oh, if it only it was a Chorus Machine, I could have gotten another attack off. Um, I would never play Verizian Genesect anymore without Chorus Machine. I think it's essential to the deck, um, and maybe just how uh, I'm comfortable with the deck with it that way. So, but yes, it is. It's handy to have the the attached return or the energy switch when you don't have an energy and being able to Chorus Machine, or just a time like I used it a bunch where if I opened um, Verizian and a Deoxys, and I needed to see if Professor's Letter was in the deck, I would Chorus Machine. <laughs> I can. Technically, Chorus Machine on Deoxys, just to search if it was in the deck. So there were some situations where I was able to do that as well. Then you just fail the Chorus Machine. So, yeah. Okay. So now after playing this tournament, would you make any changes to the day one deck, or do you think it's pretty solid? I, I really don't think I would change anything. I don't think it's the... Uh, it's probably the best you can do with Verizian Genesect, um, at least for my playstyle style um, as well. Um, I've seen lists that play head ringers and lower Skyla accounts, higher VS Seeker counts. Um, I just like to have everything be as standard as possible. I don't like any tricks with the deck whatsoever. Col Colrus Machine and Raichu are probably enough for me. So, um, no, there probably wouldn't be anything I would switch. I'm happy I did cut the tool retrieval um, because the Enhanced Hammer did help quite a bit throughout the day. So. Okay. Now, going into day two, what was your thought process about playing VG again? Um, it wasn't my first choice. I'll say that. It ended up being my last choice because I, I wasn't going to test the night before. I was so stressed and just needed to get sleep. Um, everyone who I talked to the day before, I said, like, oh, on some miraculous fluke, if I make day two, I'm playing Trevin and Excel or 100%. <laughs> it's what I wanted to play. Um, I ended up playing at a league challenge um, a couple of weeks before with a couple of the players um, from the Barry area. Um, and I didn't play the Nine Tails. So I'm like, no one's going to play Verizian Genesect. I know all the players there. Um, and ended up round one playing against Verizian Genesect. 
<laughs> so um, I, I was really content on playing Trevin and Excelgor. But if you look at the standings from that tournament, I knew that I was playing Jason Klazinski round one. Um, and joking with him the night before, I believe um, it was relatively predictable that he was going to play that deck. Um, it's well known that he, he said several times it's the best deck in Expanded. I didn't think he'd play Executor again. I knew 100% he was going to play that deck. Um, I thought that Mirror Match was a horrible idea. Um, it probably be really, really ugly. I, I wouldn't even know how to play it. I would get beat just because I'd be clueless as to what to do in the matchup. Um, then I was thinking about Evil Tall Archaeops um, was another high consideration for me. Um, but then I, I had it all laid out, and then I couldn't find the Archaeops, and all, a bunch of other players who were in top eight were asking for it, so it wasn't that smart of an idea. Um, and then I decided that, realistically... Um, if I can have a shot at even getting past round one in this tournament, I should just play what I'm most comfortable with um, and what I know the best. And if he plays Trevin and Excelgor Nine Tails, I just I rush the vol picks every single time. So um, I built the deck as standard as humanly possible um, with adding VS Seekers um, for like anything slightly different from Andrew's Worlds list because that's what it's obviously based off. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you just drop. What was that? I dropped a Shadow Triad for a VS Seeker. Um, and then the other VS Seeker would have been... I can't remember right now. You'll have it in front of you. You'll be able to see it. But um, there's no tricks. Oh, yeah. There's only 10 total Pokemon, which is something I never really do. I play Jirachi in every single deck. Mm -hmm. I won't play a deck without Jirachi. Everyone who knows me knows that. And I also play four Ultra Ball in every deck that I play Jirachi in. So it was very eerie the night before, um, playing only nine basics. Um, as I ended the 1-1 Driftblum line... Um, instead of a Raichu, instead of just doing like four Verzine, four Genesect. I didn't think mine was a good idea. Um, the Driftblim was for hopefully Lugia, which I thought may see some play, um, which it ended up seeing some play. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think Verzine Genesect was definitely the best play for day two. Um, so I just went with what I was comfortable with. Okay. So what happened in top eight? So top eight... Um, Versus Jason, we're joking um, before the game starts. Um, I ended up seeing him shuffling his deck and saw the Shellman. I'm like, I knew you were going to play that deck because we were joking the night before as well. Um, we were at the Mandarin. I'm like, I know you're going to play this deck. Don't try to tell me you're not going to play this deck. And he ends up saying something along the lines of, oh, I think you're going to play Verizian Genesec going in not very confident at all. You just know what you know how to play. I'm like, okay, you're right. <laughs> um, so... And I'm not sure how to play against Nine Tails either. So he ends up, um, it ends up being a very close game one. I wouldn't be able to recite everything that happened in that game. Um, I ended up getting a decent start, and I was able to bounce the Skyro Bridges when I need to. The biggest part, the only thing you need to know about that game was there was a crucial turn where he Silent Lab, um, then used uh, Deck and Cover with a Silver Bangle onto my Verizian, um, moves up Trevenant, and I'd been holding on to these cards for a while, just passing, 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 because I knew it was going to get to this point. Um, he has Trevenant up and a Vulpix on the bench. Um, and I was able to bump the Silent Lab with a Sky or a Bridge, Red Signal the Vulpix, and then Tool Scrapper, both the Trevenant's Float Stones. And at that, po at that point, I was, and it was only the one Tool Scrapper in the deck I had in my hand. I was waiting on that play. Um, and that ended up winning me the game. Um, which was relatively lucky that I had that all in my hand. Um, but I also was very passive in that game as well. Um, game two, everything went wrong for Jason. At some point, I know Alex mentioned it in his interview as well. Um, I asked Jason, like, how many cards do you have in hand? He just puts his hands up like this. Like, he's like, I got zero. I'm like, <laughs> okay. This is... I got, like, turn two Emerald Slash and then just Emerald Slash literally the entire game knocking out Shelmets or Phantoms. Um, he wasn't able to get anything out. Um, I don't think I even really played a supporter. I just kind of held on to my hand um, to kind of scare him away from putting down the Vulpix because he would think, like, oh, he has to have the Sky or he has to have the Red Signal in hand. Um, because when he level balled the start and he didn't go for the Vulpix, I was kind of confused. Because, um, like, if I was playing the deck um, going first, I would definitely try to get that down turn one. Mm -hmm. um, he probably knows, <laughs> knows how to play the deck a lot better than I can, um, so I won't really say anything too much about that. 
Um, but he never got the nine tails out either games. Um, Silent Lab never stayed in long enough for me to stay paralyzed. So um, it worked out well for me. I was winning that series 2-0. Okay. So after beating J- Jason, are you like just really excited and think you just win the whole tournament? Um, <laughs> no, not at all. I really, okay. uh, the entire day I was taking it one game at a time. Um, a lot of the players who are watching me are really excited for me. Um, saying like, oh, you got this, fairies, that's what you're playing next round. Um, it's a really good matchup for you. I don't think there's a spirit tomb, there's nothing like that. It's going to be good. So I was confident going into it, but also extremely nervous at the same time. Um, so I'm playing against Alex Hill. I won't talk too much about that uh, match just because he talked about it um, quite a bit in his interview, which you should go watch. Um, He's playing Fairies Mega Gardevoir with like two Florges. Mm-hmm. Um, game one, I start first. No, I go second, I believe. I can't even remember if I went first or second. <laughs> Not so much of a blur it is. Um, but I literally had everything I could possibly have. Turn two Emerald Slash, turn three Emerald Slash with a red signal onto a Spritzy. Turn four was a red signal onto an Aromatease, knocking it out. I hit red signal every single turn I needed to. I was hitting enhanced hammers all over the place. Um, it was literally everything I needed to. I was just sacking the entire game, um, and he was drawing horribly. So, And that's probably, for the most part, how the matchup I thought was going to play out. Um, not to be overly confident, but it's probably not a very good matchup for fairies, just being able to blow all their energy off the board. Uh, the big difference in that matchup, which I didn't expect until he put it down, was EXP share. Mm-hmm. Um, that was extremely crucial um, for him keeping his energy in play, um, especially with the Mega Gardevoirs, to be able to keep up. Um, if there was no EXP share, um, the, the game would have been a lot different, I'll say that much. Um, so, game two, um, he's going first. He has like a turn two Bright Garden um, for 100 and was keeping that up for quite some time. Um, I whiff energy turn one. Um, which was unfortunate, and then turn two. It wasn't going well for me at all, but I didn't end up scooping the game um, just because I felt like it was still a matchup that I could come back in. Um, but not being able, like, once he gets the Mega Gardevoirs out, it's kind of hard to keep up because you can't afford to take a turn to not G Booster um, and because you got to put the 20 um, on the Mega Gardevoir and then bring it up. But once he gets so much energy in play, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Um, so that was game two. I lost, um, game three. Um, oh, again, it's all a blur to me. Um, <laughs> I had a decent start going first. I think I got turned two and three Emerald slash onto two Janicek, which at that point I should have everything I need to win. Mm-hmm. Um, there were two crucial points in the game, which I'm not sure if he pointed in his interview. It'll be the only things I'll talk about. Um, there was a point where I took a knockout, um, to take my fourth prize, I guess it would have been. Okay. Um, I check his discard, um, or sorry, my hand is like an Ultra Ball, um, a Verzian, and a Juniper. And he has three cards in hand, three VS Seeker in the discard pile, and three ends. So my thought process is there's relatively low odds that I'm going to get end, but it's still a possibility. Um, I'd played Town Map, so there was a Colrus, a Verzian, <laughs> a muscle band and a Jirachi. Um, and I really, I made a mistake and didn't take the Jirachi. I just, I didn't want it, my thought process, I didn't want to take it and then Juniper the next turn. I wanted to save that for when I needed it. Um, so I ended up taking the muscle band just because I wanted to discard it, which ended up being a huge mistake um, because I got end down to three and, or end down to, yeah, it would have been end down to three. That was my third prize I took. Uh, I said fourth earlier. Um, I got end down to three and drew Ultra Ball and Muscle Band off my three cards. <laughs> <laughs> Which is literally the worst thing I could have drawn because the Muscle Band was more than likely the Muscle Band I took off the prize and the Ultra Ball should have been grabbing a Drachi, mm-hmm. which it did. Um, which was unfortunate because all I really needed to do was end up um, using Drachi for Shadow Triad for Red Signal um, and then I would have been one prize away at that point. Um, I end up drawing nothing out of it. Um, and he ends up coming back quite a bit. Um, the only other big play um, was he had six energy in play. Yeah. Um, 
and he talked about it a bit in his video as well. I ended up red signaling a spritzy um, that had one energy on it, and there were no EXP share in play, so that energy is going away. Um, and he has five on his bench, like five total energy on his bench, and two wonder energies on his mega Gardevoir. Um, there's four bench Pokemon on his side, three on mine, and a Ultra Balling for another Verizian and Colorus for eight. And I have probably around 15, 16 cards tops in my deck. Um, and there's two enhanced hammers left. So my thought process is I'm going to wipe one energy off the board. Um, cause this is my turn zero. That's another really important part of this as well. <laughs> Getting all lost in this. This is my turn zero. Okay. Um, and I'm way ahead on prizes. Um, I'm going to wipe the energy off his board, um, off the spritzy. And I'm hoping to call risk for eight and draw into at least one enhanced hammer. If I draw into one, he can't, um, hit me with mega Gardevoir for a knockout, right? He can't bring, unless there's like some random card I'm not sure of that's going to bring more energy into play immediately. Um, I was hoping to knock out the one on the spritzy and then enhance hammer so he can knock me out and that'd be his turn two. Mm -hmm. And at that point he wouldn't be able to take enough prizes to win the game and I would win on prizes. Um, but I end up coursing and whiffing both enhanced hammers, um, which was unfortunate. And then he took a knockout on my Genesect and it's my turn two at that point. Um, he has two prizes left. I have one and he has like a gajillion cards in hand, like one card left in deck. He just took two prizes. So he obviously has a Lysander in hand as he has none in his discard pile, uh, six energy in play. So my only last hope was to end myself to one and hit an enhanced hammer and he wouldn't have the energy to knock me out and I ended up whiffing and losing that game. So I mean, top four still great at regionals. So congratulations, sir. Yeah, um, I'm still happy about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard not to be a little upset, as I think I would have had a decent matchup in the finals against Calvin, playing Verizian against Toad and having the Drift Bloom and Enhanced Hammers. But um, it was a really good match against Alex. I learned a lot uh, being a new player. I really appreciate um, the compliments he gave me um, in his interview. It means a lot. So Okay. Now, I want to talk about your deck some again. Now... The one with Driplum, did you really ever use it, or was it kind of a dead card? Um, since I only played a total of, what, five games, mm -hmm. um, I never used it against Jason. Um, and I probably should have used it um, against Alex, but I never really had it when I needed it. I didn't prioritize it over getting a Genesect out, just because I just wanted to G-boost to the whole game and win, right? Yeah. Um, I think if I got it out, um, especially in game three and hit the enhanced hammers, I could have swept at least like a, uh, a baby Xerneas or an Aromatease, a Spritz or something and have something up and force them to Lysander, um, which may have been a mistake on my part, not going for it. Um, but I, I don't regret putting it in the deck as, at all um, because I definitely would have been using it in uh, the finals if I made it. So okay. Now, what was your favorite expanded card for the deck? Sky or Bridge, a hundred percent. It's so it's sad playing Rizzy and Genesect without it. Um, it's so completely different, especially with Toad. Um, obviously, Rizzy and Genesect has a Toad matchup with all the item lock um, in the format right now. Being able to bump a stadium and have free retreat in Rizzy is so good. Um, Super Rod, I thought would have been one, but I think I Super Rodded once the entire games I hadn't expanded. Um, not anything in my first series because obviously I wasn't playing items the entire game. Um, yeah, definitely Sky or Bridge would be the biggest thing. Okay, and after playing day two, I know you haven't played that many games with the deck, but would you make any changes to it? Um, no, not at all. Um, a lot of people thought that I should have played Lysander um, instead of maybe Town Map um, to help to knock it in Ninetales, but after playing against Jason, um, I don't know how much it really would have helped having the Lysander. Um, so, no, I wouldn't have changed anything at all. Okay. And after making top four, how many championship points are you at currently? Um, surprisingly, 225. I do not have my world's invite. I never really planned on getting my world's <laughs> invite. Um so I'm I'm in an awkward position now because I'm a lot closer than I ever thought I would have been. So um, hopefully I'll get lucky at nationals. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Now, are you going to any regionals or nationals the next one? Um, 
I may be going to a regionals. I don't really want to say anything because I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, but hopefully, um, I would need a pretty uh, good performance at either Wisconsin and Alberta are the two regionals that I'd be considering going to. Um, I'm relatively uncomfortable with the new format because at least for this tournament, I went in completely unprepared. I had no time to put into the game whatsoever. I'm just like, I'm going to play Verizian um, and ended up doing well. For this format, it's hard for me to uh, travel all that way just to play a format that I know nothing about and don't have the time to test for. Um, so it may just be nationals for me. I'm not 100% sure though. Okay. And I know you haven't tested, I mean, you haven't played that much in the new format, but do you think VG will still be a great play in the new set? Um, I've talked about it a little bit um, with some of the players who are considering going to the next regionals. Um, it's so hard to tell. It's so unbelievably hard to tell. Um, obviously, there's a lot of hype around Ray Quaza, um, which I think will beat down Vrizian Genesect. I think you could play a ride or a heavier Raichu line maybe to deal with it. Because I think with the rise of Rayquaza, I think the other two big decks, in my opinion, will be Toad Shaman, which is the only deck that I've really tested. I think Toad Shaman is definitely my top consideration if I go to regionals. That's probably the deck that I would play. Um, I was testing it a bit last night, and you can literally draw your entire deck in one turn, and then trump card and draw half of it again. Mm -hmm. it, it's honestly insane. Um, so I think if people catch on to that, and Groudon I think is another really big play, um, for regionals, especially with Mega Turbo, um, it'll be able to keep up with maybe the faster decks, and it's good against Toad. So with Toad and Groudon being relatively big, is Vrizzy and Genesec still viable? I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll say it's not viable. There's been tons of times, even going into this past format with Primal Clash, I'm like, oh, Vrizzian's dead. Um, Florida Regionals, Flareon won. Vrizzian's never coming back. But you can never count that deck out. Um, if one thing, it has ultimate consistency, um, so it is always a good choice, in my opinion, if, if that means anything for a big event like Regionals. Okay. Now, do you want to give any shout-outs to anybody? Um, yeah, I have a couple. Um, first off, I'd like to give a shout-out to uh, Andrew Estrada um, for helping me quite a bit um, over this past weekend and before that. Um, we were going to play Evil Tall. They ended up going with Evil Tall. I chose Verizian um, as I felt Executor may be a little bit bigger, and I like that matchup instead of Evil Tall. Um, he lent me his, not the actual ones he played, but the base set hollow um, grass energies the morning before the event. I'm like, oh, I have so much to live up to. I'm going to go like O2 and face Flareons, but I played those, so that was pretty exciting um so yeah big shout out to andrew for helping me quite a bit the night before as well with my list uh for day two um other big shout out to my friend malik um who you've interviewed before um he's in malaysia right now he's pretty upset that he wasn't there that had been his hometown in canada kitchener waterloo um big shout out to him um for testing with me and chatting all the time about the game uh, shout out to everyone who was in my hotel room, um, chaotically telling me what to play in day two. Uh, <laughs> everyone was telling me something different, talking over each other. Um, it was chaos, but it was really fun uh, spending that time with everyone. Yeah. Um, and then biggest shout out uh, to my number one testing partner and the person who got me into the game itself, uh, my girlfriend Emma. Um, she unfortunately couldn't make the event, um, but was there with me um, the whole way. I guess. Um, so big shout out to her for putting up with me playing Verizian Genesec two, three, four hours a day testing against every deck that she wants to play. So um, that's about it I can think of. I'm probably missing someone, but um, those are the big people I want to shout out. Um, Andrew, Malik, and Emma, uh, those are the biggest people who really believed in me um, and thought that I'd actually be able to do well at an event like this when a lot of people probably didn't. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for doing this, and good luck at Nationals. Thank you, man. All right, take care.